Grit is a book written by Angela Duckworth that proves the key to success isn't talent or intelligence, but rather a combination of passion and perseverance called grit. The book covers eight main questions. One, why do some people succeed when others fail? Two, how do you know if you have grit? Three, can you succeed even if you're not naturally talented? Four, how much does effort matter? Five, how do you figure out what you're passionate about? Six, does practice always make perfect? Seven, what goals should you set to grow your grit? Eight, can we encourage a culture of grit? Book review by Corolla Schultz. One, why do some people succeed when others fail? The application process for the United States Military Academy at West Point is rigorous. Like any elite university, West Point requires great grades, and up to this point, they have required excellent SAT and ACT scores. You also need high marks on a fitness assessment that includes running, push-ups, sit-ups, and only 1,200 students are admitted and enrolled. Yet despite this rigorous process, one in five West Point students will drop out before graduation. Many of these dropouts occur the summer before freshman year during an intensive boot camp called Beast Barracks. In Beast Barracks, cadets wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and then spend their day in rigorous workouts or in class. Why do some cadets get through the grueling regimen while others drop out? And more generally, why do some people succeed in difficult situations while others give up? Through research, Duckworth uncovered one commonality among highly successful people. It wasn't just that they were talented or lucky. These successful people shared a combination of passion and perseverance in pursuit of long-term goals. Duckworth calls this grit. Grit is the resolve to keep going, even when things get tough. Many researchers have found that grit is the trait most highly correlated with success, even more than talent or intelligence. In the next section, you can see how you rank on the Duckworth grit scales. Number two, how do you know if you have grit? For each question, give yourself a number on a scale of one to five, one being not at all like me and five being very much like me. Keep track of your numbers because we will use them at the end of this exercise. Number one, setbacks don't discourage me. Two, I am a hard worker. Three, I finish whatever I begin. Four, I am diligent, I never give up. Five, I have overcome hindrances to conquer an important challenge. The closer you are to 25 total points, the grittier you are. But it's important to know that this score isn't written in stone. As we've discussed, grit requires passion and perseverance. But these are things you can identify, develop, and practice. In the next few sections, you'll discover actionable ways to foster your passion and practice your perseverance. Number three, can you succeed even if you're not naturally talented? Even though we value effort, we often think that talented people are more successful at their chosen craft. In truth, talent can help us climb the learning curve of a skill quickly, and we're more likely to enjoy doing it, but talent doesn't guarantee success. However, our bias towards talent can make success seem out of reach. In the next section, we'll cover something that matters more than talent, effort. Number four, how much does effort matter? In 1940, 130 sophomores at a Harvard University took part in an experiment on human development called the treadmill test. Each subject was asked to run on a treadmill for five minutes. The treadmill, however, was set at a very steep angle and cranked up to the highest speed. Researchers knew that the average man could only last four minutes. They had made the test physically and mentally exhausting in order to test the subject's willpower. After the treadmill test, researchers checked in with the same cohort every two years after graduation. They asked the men about their income, career advancement, health, social activities, visits to psychiatrists, and drug use. This information was used to estimate the men's overall psychological state. Researchers found the treadmill test was a fairly reliable predictor of how subjects psychologically adjusted to adulthood. This is because life challenges are often like the treadmill test. They require effort to stick it out even when things get difficult. Duckworth would have made one adjustment to the treadmill test. She would have asked which men wanted to come back the next day to try again. That's because the willingness to come back to the treadmill day after day is key for success. To succeed, we need to put in consistent effort, no matter how talented we start out. Even the most talented runner wouldn't have lasted long at their first try on the treadmill test. Without effort, talent can't get very far. This is the end of part one. In part two, you'll learn how to find what you're passionate about.